look at the stock of CrowdStrike Go. The cloud-native cybersecurity firm reported a magnificent quarter last night, and its stock shot up more than 10% today. Makes sense. We live in a world where publicly traded companies need to disclose any data breaches within four days, which has made it all the more essential for them to get the best cyber protection. So it's no wonder CrowdStrike had record net new and accelerating annual recurring revenue. Big, big piece of data there. Record operating profitability and record free cash flow. On top of that, management raised their full-year forecast pretty nicely. Like I told you, you don't bet against CrowdStrike going into earnings because at least since 20 coming public 2019, these guys never miss. Don't take it from me. Let's check in from George Kurtz. He's the co-founder, president, and CEO of CrowdStrike. Get a better read of the situation. Mr. Kurtz, welcome back to Mad Money. Great to be here, Jim. George, this was a quarter of tremendous records. I want to ask you, in this quarter of records, which is the one you think is most important for us to focus on? Well, I think when you look at the net new ARR, it's a record. Obviously, we accelerated to 13% year-over-year growth, and that is with a, a macro headwind, as we've talked about, as many have talked about over the last year. So uh, kudos to the team for executing really well, and I think it really just demonstrates the power of the, the single platform that we built at CrowdStrike designed to help companies stop breaches, save time, and save money. You spent a lot of time on your conference call and in your readings talking about a consolidation. People no longer want different vendors. They want one that they trust. And it seems like that yours, according to this, when I was reading about the Mercedes AMGs, they can install yours over a weekend? Well, I mean, we can install it over hours sometimes. I mean, we've had customers uh, install 25,000 an hour, you know, so it's it's crazy how fast we can actually go. It generally depends on how fast the customer wants to go. But that's the way we built the platform. Easy to deploy without a reboot, uh, remo removes friction from uh, the operation. And overall, we don't want to get in the way of the customer. We want to be able to provide that protection, provide that visibility. Uh, and give them the power that need that they need to focus on their business. Now, we have had some horrible, horrible attacks of late. We have MGM, we have Caesars, we have Clorox. Any of these preventable in your eyes? Well, when you look at these breaches, um, you know, this is uh, indicative of the environment that we're actually in right now. The adversaries move so quick. It used to be 79 minutes until they could break out from a, a system they got onto. Now it's seven minutes. It's, it's, it's crazy how fast they're moving. And a lot of these breaches are social engineering related and it ties into identity. So I think what's important to realize is that customers need to have identity protection as well as many of the other technologies that are out there, EDR and antivirus. One of the things that we called out in the conference call and that has just been growing uh, tremendously is our identity protection technology. And it really helps identify these identity-based attacks and be able to prevent them. But it's a comprehensive program, and uh, not only is it technology, but it's the service layer that we wrap around it, helping customers identify these breaches, even if they're socially engineered, and be able to stop but them. But, George, I'm worried. I, I have a call center. It, it, it's not mine. I pay them something. They may screw up. Someone says, hey, listen, I'm a friend of so-and-so's. So they're using LinkedIn biography. How do you stop that? Well, that part's hard, uh, Jim, because if it, I would say the— the, the biggest weakness is between the keyboard and the chair, which is the human. And even if someone compromises those credentials, <clears throat> what our technology can do is it can look at what that person is doing, that adversary, and it can basically say, this doesn't really look like Jim, so I'm going to re-challenge them and provide another one-time challenge, which then <clears throat> will force you to actually uh, go through a password authentication process. So it gives you a little bit more time to try to identify and stop these adversaries. Okay, one of the things I like about you, what you offer is, according to the testimonials, is visibility. For instance, you had a great video of a fellow by, uh, who handles security for Magna, which is a company that I absolutely love. It's the biggest auto parts company in the world. They're talking about they can sh that a, a hacker can shut down a plant instantly, and you've got to pay them off in order to keep the customer happy, but they don't find that experience with you. Is it because they don't they hear that you're that CrowdStrike protects and they go to some other factory? Well, part of what we've done is uh, is to leverage AI since the beginning of the company, Jim. This is not a new thing for us, and you and I have talked about this. Um, that's the way I started the company, to be able to identify these threats and then ultimately stop them. So when you think about ransomware, we can identify these pieces of ransomware without ever seeing them in the, in the, in the past. And that's different than signature-based technologies that are out there today. And so from my perspective, we can provide the prevention that customers need um, and prevent those ransomware activities. Right now, ransomware on average is 8.5 million per ransom event, which is double just over the last month.
Well, that's incredible. And yet when I listen to who the, you know, you have state actors, but then you have these scattered spiders. I got to tell you, scattered spider to me, George, sounds like a, a publicly traded company that's a firm with has all the good AI that they want. How do you stop scattered spider with AI that gets into your organization? And the next thing you know, you can't even realize it until your whole line of Clorox is shut down. Well, when you look at these groups uh, and these adversaries, and spiders are the cybercrime groups, there's many of them out there, and they're actually very good. So what's important to realize is that you have to have prevention technology, prevent as much as you can. You have to have visibility, and you have to have a service layer on top of it that can identify these, and even if someone is socially engineered, be able to stop those attacks. What's important to realize is that things like uh, dark AI, we're seeing uh, fraud GPT, which is allows organizations or cybercrime groups to actually leverage AI to be able to create these sort of attacks without having a whole bunch of knowledge. So they can monetize these attacks even if they don't have the knowledge in-house. Well, I mean, should you, you can't advise anyone to pay, but then again, Caesars pays, they, do, they live, MGM doesn't pay, they die. I mean, it doesn't seem right. Well, each company needs to make their own decision, but our job is to prevent those uh, attacks from happening and obviously prevent the payment. And uh, there's no silver bullets in security, but I think it's about having a comprehensive plan. And, you know, when you look at the platform that we've built and the success and the module adoption and the ability to actually consolidate, what we have is working and customers like it and they're buying more of it. Uh, we know that uh, President Xi was recently in San Francisco. Just uh, curiosity, please. Were there fewer attacks coming from China while he was over here? I don't know the attacks from China ever stop. Uh, you know, when you look uh, every seven minutes, we're actually identifying hands-on keyboard type attacks across uh, customer base. So every seven minutes, there's actually new hands-on keyboard. That's not malware. That's just like adversaries doing things. And uh, those are the sort of attacks that are out there, whether it's <clears throat> nation state or whether it's cybercrime. They're very good, very fast, and very persistent. Now, everybody knows that ever since the uh, SEC got involved with <laughs> the four-day rule, they have no choice. Phone ringing you off the hook just from publicly traded companies that are afraid? Well, there's a lot of publicly traded companies that are fi trying to figure out what they have in place. Can they actually respond to it? Can they figure out if they have a breach? Um, so, you know, those are tailwinds that we see in the business, and uh, it's something that every publicly traded company is going to have to deal with. But don't they feel that if they have Microsoft, they're fine? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we've uh, we had a, a pretty big service quarter this uh, this uh, past quarter, and a lot of it was dealing with uh, the cleanup of Microsoft technologies. And, um, you know, again, I think what companies are seeing is that good enough is not good enough, right? right. You have to have the best technology in the world. Uh, to be able to prevent these attacks, and that's what we're focused on delivering. Every day we think about stopping breaches, Jim, not not uh, applications well, how about, how about and your other biggest things. deal with a hospitality hotel chain? That sounded like something where a Caesars or an MGM made somebody wise. Is that what happened? And they realized, wait a second, we're vulnerable too? Let's go to CrowdStrike? Well, we've got a lot of big customers that are out there, and it's been you know an active uh, quarter in helping customers respond to some of these attacks. And uh, again, I think when people look at our technology, what it can do, how fast it can actually be deployed and the results they can get, I think they're buyers. Gentlemen, answer. Thank you very much to George Kurtz, co-founder, president, CEO, coming from Singapore, I believe. Singapore is our new office. And uh, this is obviously uh, a key part of our expansion plan is in APAC. And uh, it's a pleasure to be here with all the crowd strikers and all of our local customers. Say hello and congratulations. Good to see you, George. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. May have back so much. the break. Coming up, Salesforce shared earnings after the close. What does the quarter mean for Enterprise Software's 800-pound gorilla? Find out next. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.